Hi you guys, it's me, Violet Tchotchke. I'm super excited today because this is a look that I feel that I've perfected. We are gonna be doing a femme dom inspired makeup look. <laughs> I'm super interested in fetish. I do kind of a BDSM, dominatrix-esque, sub, SNM aesthetic a lot. All right, let's get right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and block my brow like I always do. Okay, so I've blocked my brows. They're fully covered. I'm looking nice and crazy. Now I'm going to make it up as I go. So I'm gonna just start with my basic cat eye that I always do. And I'm gonna build from there and just see, see where I go. And then I love to do this trick. This is like my famous trick. I put liquid liner on the bottom and then I blink and then it transfers to the top legs. So I have really, really hooded eyes and it's super frustrating to do any kind of makeup. So if you look, I'm gonna just like line my eye normally here, filling that in. And I'm gonna blink, and boom, I have like a guide to just fill all of this in. And then what I like to do is take a brush and some black eyeshadow and just go over the liquid to really mattify it and make sure none of the bit is like transferring. I've always really been inspired by fetish artists like John Willie and Jean Bilbrew and Eric Stanton. And that's kind of how I've always wanted my drag character to look. It's like a really powerful drawing of a woman. So I like really graphic, strong, female imagery. Um, and I think it lends itself really well to, to fetish. And I also love um, sort of clothing that is constrictive um, and I love clothing as like kind of feti fetishizing the details that go into craftsmanship of clothing so it really all ties hand in hand for for my aesthetic and kind of what my drag character is at its core it's gonna be like a hyper realized version of my drag character and there you have two basic basic cat eyes I think what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start face taping just so I can get where my face is gonna be and I can start drawing the rest of the shapes that I wanna create. Cause I wanna do this like really intense, I want it to look almost like a mask, like I'm wearing this like mask, um, like, like a dominatrix would wear, you know, like a little fetish mask, but out of makeup. Okay, so from here I'm gonna start to do some eyebrows and I wanna do like really super arched, interesting eyebrows. So let's get into it. Now I'm gonna go in and go over it with black. The eyebrows, that is. All right, and there you go. There are my super graphic fetish inspired brows. I'm gonna do the same kind of technique with a bit more of my shape mapping um, with this choke pencil and kind of map out some more shapes uh, and give myself a nice... I actually used to work under a dominatrix in a dungeon. Um, I was brought in as a part of a fetish called forced feminization. Basically, forced feminization is the act of feminizing a man, typically, who's super, super macho, as a way of humiliation. So it's humiliation is like basically the fetish. 
And so I was brought in to do makeup for these businessmen who, they never really had a chance to feel feminine, I don't think. And I think this was like a way for them to have a safe space to explore their femininity and kind of have some role reversal and have a strong woman kind of tell them what to do as opposed to the other way around. So it was actually a really beautiful experience. I got to kind of see these men, um, I don't know, embrace their feminine side in a really like powerful way. And it was really cool. So I, got, I actually have some, some dominatrix experience under my belt. Okay, so I've got like general shapes blocked out for above my eyes. I'm gonna go in under my eyebrow now and highlight and then I'm gonna fill in these shapes. So I'm gonna go in with my TV White by Krylon. And then I'm gonna do some translucent on top, probably some shimmer, make it really, really uh, contrasted. Now I'm gonna go in with a black pencil and kind of outline the shape I made for my crease using the taupe pencil. I'm just gonna darken it and make it super perfect and clean. Now I'm gonna go back over that with liquid eyeliner and really make those shapes just super, super solid black and pop. All right, so I think the next step, I'm gonna draw some more shapes on to what I've already created and continue this outlining in black process. Um, so I'm gonna keep using this taupe colored Makeup Forever pencil. So I've got both of my eye shapes mapped out the way I want them. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go in now, and I'm going to fill them in with black, and then I'm gonna start adding glitter. So for me, glitter is not really a typical fetish. It's not a part of the typical fetish aesthetics. But I think today, the way I'm gonna be incorporating it, it's gonna look more like a mask and less like, you know, a glitter lid or something really basic like that. So with that being said, I'm about to apply copious amounts of glitter. So I think I've got all the black glitter on that I wanna do. Now I'm gonna go in with some red and some pink and some purple glitter and just kind of accent the tips of what this little mask that I've created.
All right, well that took fucking forever, but as you can see, she is glittered. She is glistening. She's gorgeous. She feels some domination coming on. I think next is time for base. Yes, God. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up any of the fallout real quick before I put some primer on with a little bit of tape. Just make sure that you don't have any glitter on my face. Redness reducing primer by Smashbox. Just gonna take a nice healthy amount and apply it to my face. And I'm gonna color correct my mouth area because she's got a little bit of a shadow. When I was apprenticing under the Dominatrix, her name was actually Mistress Ultraviolet and it was at the Atlanta Dungeon. And I remember I shaved off this businessman's mustache because I don't do bearded drag. And I remember she was telling me that he thought it was like the most erotic thing to have me like trim his mustache off. I guess it was like a sign of his like masculinity. And I think he'd never like been told what to do before. And I was, and he was like, oh, can we just keep it? And I was like, no, like you're shaving your face. Like don't, it's not a big deal. And I think being told like what to do was super erotic for him. But not even like, it wasn't even a sexual thing. It was just like, he's never been told what to do. He's just like a white straight man. She met another dominatrix over and we all just kind of drink champagne. And he had this like really shitty lingerie on. Like she must have got on Amazon and got, he was like big and he just looked so ridiculous in it. But I still got paid and he, I think still talks about it to this day, the shaving of the mustache. The money was really good. I mean, I remember at the time I was still working at like a pizza place in Atlanta and doing drag on the side. I remember getting paid like a couple hundred dollars and being like, whoa. Of course the dominatrix was paying me out of her pay. So she was making like bank and she just threw me a couple hundred dollars to like put some makeup on him and humiliate him and drink champagne and laugh at him. Um, so she must've been making tons of money. I would totally do some like high class humiliation, kinky dominatrix situation again. So if you've got the coins and you wanna get humiliated by me professionally, comment down below if you would like me to humiliate you publicly. My drag character is heavily, heavily influenced by fetish aesthetics and a lot of fetish illustrators and artists. Um, of course, the icon Betty Page is a huge fetish icon and sex symbol and pinup, pinup cheesecake model. But that's what I love about her. She kind of would do really classic pinup swimsuit cheesecake modeling. And then she had this other, these other gigs with uh, Irving Penn would take all these like fetish heel photos and really like taboo stuff at the time. And when I was starting drag, I basically wanted to be the drag Betty Page. And I've kind of been all over the place with my aesthetics, but I'm kind of going back to that classic sort of Betty, Betty aesthetic. I actually did a music video kind of inspired by her and a single called Betty. It was produced by Tommy Lee. And actually funny enough, I just heard it played on the Versace runway this last last season. I guess that would be spring, summer 2019 men's show. So shout out to Donatella or whoever created that mix using Betty. Love ya, waiting for my royalties check. Now I'm gonna contour. This is like right before Drag Race, like right before I got on Drag Race. And um, I was working there, working at a pizza place and at a drag restaurant too. And I think we were talking about maybe bringing me on as like, a, as a dominatrix myself. 
but then I got the call for Drag Race, and now she's here. I think that the the dominatrix mistress Ultraviolet, I think maybe she liked my name, and I think she liked my aesthetic, and she needed someone that was going to be kind of knowledgeable in drag makeup as far as force feminization goes, because that's kind of an aspect, and sometimes they just, you know, put eyelashes on, but I think they really wanted to, like, give him the full transformation. Okay, it's time for the lip. Cool, so I've got that outline, and then I'm gonna go in with some blue eyeshadow and outline it even more. Cool, so now I'm gonna go in with my blue lipstick. Now I'm gonna blend it a bit because I'm gonna do like an ombre lip. Now I'm gonna go in with this purple. I think this is what I was going for. Yep, a purple and blue ombre lip. I'm feeling very gorgeous. I'm gonna to top it off with some of this iridescent Dazzle Glass by MAC. Love that sound. All right, well I think that's it. I'm gonna throw on some lashes and the look and I'll see you on the other side. Mwah! Well, that is it for me. I hope you enjoyed my Femdom digital drag video. Be sure to subscribe for more art, beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and glamour. Mwah.